Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for laughing my ass off when my son demanded a new gaming chair after destroying the first one. I know I probably messed up, but I'm struggling with how bad it really was. My son, who's almost 17, is a big gamer. For Christmas, I bought him an expensive gaming chair. He spends hours playing online shooters and it's his favorite thing, though it sometimes fuels his temper issues. He's been seeing a therapist for these anger issues, and I thought a nice chair would be a good gift since he'd been managing his anger well recently. Well, I was wrong. The day after Christmas, he started playing and, naturally, things didn't go his way. He was losing in the game which got him riled up. The situation escalated, and he ended up slamming his chair to the ground, breaking it. When he came to me later, asking if I could replace it because it was a gift and he really liked it, I lost it. I couldn't help but laugh. It wasn't just a chuckle I was in a full-blown laughing fit. I know it sounds awful, but the more he tried to argue that he deserved a replacement because it was a Christmas gift, the funnier I found it. I was barely able to breathe, and every time he said something like, but I need a chair, or what am I supposed to do now? I laughed even harder. I tried to explain that I was laughing at his feelings, but rather at how absurd it was for him to expect me to replace something he broke out of anger. I told him that respect for belongings comes with maturity, and if he couldn't manage that, then he couldn't expect a new chair. He was absolutely furious and hurt. He felt slighted and disrespected, and I get that now. I feel terrible about laughing, and I can't help but think maybe I had some sort of mini breakdown. It was like I couldn't stop myself from laughing, even though I know it was wrong to react that way. But honestly, his demand felt so ridiculous that I couldn't contain my reaction. My son's still angry with me, and our relationship is strained because of this incident. I understand why he's upset, but I also feel like his request was so out of line that it triggered my response. I'm torn between feeling guilty for my reaction and feeling justified in my frustration over the whole situation. How badly did I mess up here? Was my reaction justifiable, or did I cross a line? I'm really trying to figure out if I handled this poorly or if my son's reaction was just over the top. In the days since the incident, the tension at home has been palpable. My son and I haven't really spoken much since then, and there's this heavy uncomfortable silence between us. I've been reflecting a lot on what happened and questioning my own actions. I can't shake the feeling that my response was a mix of frustration and something deeper. Maybe I was just overwhelmed by the pressures of parenting and trying to manage his anger issues while balancing my own stress. I understand that his request for a replacement chair was out of line, but I'm beginning to see how my reaction might have made things worse. It's clear now that my laughter, though it felt like a release in the moment, came off as dismissive and hurtful. I've realized that while I was trying to make a point about respect and responsibility, my approach was completely wrong. I'm planning to sit down with my son and try to mend things. I need to apologize for my reaction and show him that I can be supportive even when I don't agree with his actions. I hope that by acknowledging my mistake, we can start to rebuild our relationship and work towards understanding each other better. AITA for refusing to sell my rental properties for our wedding. Two years ago I, 36M, popped the question to my fiancé 30F and were set to get married this summer. When we first got together we both had our own places. She had a nice luxury townhouse, and I owned a couple of properties in the city. We agreed that when it came time to move in together, we'd live in her place. Now I've got this old duplex in a neighborhood that used to be sketchy but has been gentrifying for a while. I rent out the duplex to some fantastic tenants in half of a big industrial building next door to an HVAC guy and some craft brewers. I got these properties about 12 years ago for a steal, and now they're making me a ton of money. I could lose my job tomorrow and be totally fine. But my fiancé doesn't see it like that. Since we moved in together, she's been on my case about selling the properties. And as the wedding gets closer, she's been pushing even harder. She sees those properties as a big pile of cash that we could use for the wedding, honeymoon, or upgrading our living situation. I keep telling her that keeping these properties is like having a safety net. If one of us hits a rough patch, it's a huge help. Last Saturday, we had the biggest blow up yet. I lost my cool and told her straight up that she's a spender and I'm a saver, and I also brought up her credit card debt. Things have been pretty chilly since then. So, am I the bad guy for refusing to sell off my second income? It started fine, but quickly went south and ended in a big fight that degenerated into a lot of petty shit slinging by the end. She accused me of not trusting her fair, 
and I pointed out that her habits make it basically impossible to trust her with money anyway, probably not my proudest moment. But, I did again make it clear in no uncertain terms that the properties are staying in the LLC and I won't sell them, and that the financial decisions regarding them would be mine alone. I may have also had a few choice words about the princess for a day wedding she wanted. After a couple of weeks of avoiding each other, and not talking, and me sleeping in the basement of the townhouse, I said I wanted to hit the pause button and leave for a while. She was upset, but didn't say much. I loaded up my things and went to my parents' house and told them what happened. They told me I could stay as long as I needed. Somewhere near the end of April, I got a call from her dad out of the blue, what the hell, demanding to know what was going on and why I'd broken things off. I tried to explain what had been going on, but he was the angry dad of an upset young woman, and I don't think much got through. That call ended with him calling me a scumbag and hanging up on me. I've only had a few properly long-term relationships end in my lifetime, but that's the first time I've had an angry father yell at me about one. There's been no contact since. I'm sad that just over four years of my life with someone went up in smoke like this, but that's the way she goes I guess. My parents didn't seem very surprised when I showed up, so maybe I really was the last one to know what was going on, like so many Redditors were pointing out. For some good news, and also the thing that reminded me to update my Reddit post, is that yesterday I bought another house, one for me to live in. A tiny little brick post-war brick ranch in an old subdivision about 20 minutes from my rentals. It needs work, but I'm looking forward to having a PR joke to take my mind off things. It's going to be strange living on my own again but I think I'll manage. Comment Soul Feaser Good for you all, I understand that it's hard but you made the right choice and with that behavior from her and communication with her dad honestly you've dodged a bullet. Money is number one reason for divorce. You saved yourself from a lot of stress in the future. After big wedding demands often come big demands when it comes to spoiling the children, then bigger and better house demands, always new car demands. Spend or spend. Which is not a problem if they earn a lot, invest, have secondary income, nice portfolio and savings. It sounds like not only does she doesn't have any of that, but also is not willing to understand and learn about it. You did good for yourself in the long run. And congratulations on the new property. Diversify that property portfolio baby. So we heard her. I'm glad you got out of this relationship, because it was not going to get better. Leaving aside the issue of whether or not someone should spend that kind of money on a wedding I didn't, and wouldn't if I did it again, the truth is that after the wedding there's a whole marriage to get through, and you guys were not on the same page at all. She pretty much torpedoed a good life with financial security, because she wanted to pretend for a short period of time to be wealthy as opposed to secure. Grab HR. Good call, I honestly don't understand what was going through her head, why would anyone give up that type of security just to have one big day? Boggles the mind. I who you don't hurt for long, and I'm sure you'll find someone worth your time and effort. Thank you for listening to today's story, have a nice day.